Hey folks, so like a lot of people, I have been caught in the Borderlands 3 Vortex uh, pretty much since the game came out, and I've been having a lot of fun, uh, so I figured I'd put together a build guide. Um, if you're new to the channel, I do a lot of Path of Exile content, typically. I'm a big fan of loot RPGs in general, and uh, one of the things I like to do is make long-winded but thorough build guides for whatever build I found to be particularly effective in that game. Uh, and I figured we'd do the same thing here for Borderlands 3. Uh, I've been playing mostly bows and uh, I've really been enjoying it. And so I thought I'd go over the setup that I've found to be my favorite for both mobbing and boss killing. Um, usually the first thing people want to know about in a build here is the skill tree. And actually, because my build guides tend to be pretty long, I'll probably put in the description some timestamps for each of the sections that we have here just in case you want to skip through. So check the description if you want to jump ahead to something. But typically, people want to know about the skill tree first, right? And you'll note here, we don't actually take anything in Shield of Retribution. And I've seen a lot of comments. People seem to really like this build. Um, for me, I found that it just didn't seem that efficient at endgame. It seemed like a very strong leveling tree for sure. A lot of these bonuses are great when you don't really have a lot of gear synergies to work with. You're using just whatever gear you can find in your first playthrough. And this is offering a combination of both offense and defense. Uh, there's a lot of Decent sized additive gun damage bonuses between uh, Phalanx Doctrine and Desperate Measures and Drowning in Brass that can make up for a lot of gear deficiencies and combined with a lot of shield bonuses. Uh, it's very effective for your first playthrough. My issue with this skill tree though, when I got to level 50 and doing Mayhem 3 content and stuff, was twofold. The first was that. A lot of these bonuses are additive in the sense that they're adding to the same sort of stack of damage pool, right? Most of your damage is coming from these three gun damage bonuses. Two of them are kill skills. So inherently, we're going to be at a disadvantage in the boss killing side of things because we're only really going to get desperate measures for the most part. We will get some benefit out of experimental munitions for a little bit of you know, incendiary damage and selfless vengeance for more incendiary. But um, it didn't feel like it was offering enough of a multiplicative force in a way that I could combine it with a gear synergy to create like a solid damage engine, which is typically you know what you're trying to do when it comes to end game builds in these kind of loot games. The other thing I think was more relevant to me was that a lot of this tree is focused on shield defense and in the end game context one of the most common things you'll see people do is pair things like thin red line with and there's an artifact that reduces your health to one in exchange for doubling your shield capacity and in addition with the class mod and vampire it can result in some extreme levels of survivability right um, what I found with that was that this left side of Demolition Woman already provides a really extreme level of survivability. Uh, just Vampire and Means of Destruction paired with some kind of Tesla coil grenade already mean that you're nigh unkillable just with a health bar. And so in practice, increasing your shield didn't actually translate into surviving things you normally wouldn't because you're already nigh unkillable, at least in the mobbing context. Um, the other thing that I didn't like about that setup was that it removes your ability to leverage the health gate mechanic, which is a pretty strong defensive mechanic in its own right. It's built into the game. It's been in the, in the series for, I think, all the way back to Borderlands 1, where so long as your health is over a certain threshold of your max health, I want to say it's like either a third or half. I honestly don't know the full value. 
Um, and it's not super important, to be honest. But you have to be over a certain threshold of health at one of those two values. And as long as you're over that amount of health, a single hit can't actually immediately down you into fight for your life. It will stop the game short at like 1.5% or something like that of your total health instead of outright knocking you, basically killing you. When you're at one health like that, you can't leverage the health gating mechanic. Once your shields, if, if it hits large enough to deplete your entire shields, you're just immediately going to go down. And there are some attacks in this game that seem designed around that health gate mechanic where they weren't concerned about how much damage it was going to do because, hey, you know, you should have enough health providing you're playing well. That uh, And these attacks are usually avoidable, you know, and you can dodge them a lot of the time. But it felt annoying to get hit sometimes by these attacks and just immediately go down because you just don't get the benefit of health gating anymore. And because you weren't really increasing your survivability in the con like in practice, because you're already nigh unkillable, it felt a bit like a wasted effort, especially because the opportunity cost of using your class mod slot for that turned out in my testing to be very high. And we'll we'll show that in the examples later. So I just sort of found that this wasn't a good vehicle for finding efficiency in either direction of boss killing or mobbing. Um, which is sort of your prime directive when it comes to endgame farming, right? You're trying... Efficiency really translates into how fast you can clear the content. You know, dying is obviously a, a time penalty that you want to avoid. Um, but the other half of that is basically killing monsters, you know, efficiently and quickly. Especially because Moe's gets no access to move speed in her skill trees, really which is the other element that you can use to improve your mobbing effectiveness. And we just don't have access to that, so we need to uh, basically do it through efficient damage. So I found myself preferring these two trees for endgame builds, and I fought back and forth for a while between um, capping out Demolition Woman and capping out Bottomless Mags, and what I found was that this baseline in Demolition Woman all the way down to here to two of the last felt like the most value you actually get out of Demolition Woman. And adding short fuse to the build didn't feel like it added enough of a mobbing increase to offset how much value we can wind up getting from Forge uh, and investing a little bit heavier in bottomless mags when it came to the single target side and improving our boss killing ability. So Let's start here, though, because I, I do feel that this left side of Demolition Woman is almost mandatory. I think if your build doesn't go down this road in Demolition Woman, the build's probably not going to be very good feeling in Mayhem 3, at least on True Vault Hunter mode. Vampire, in particular, is just such a, a core skill. Even if you run Shield of Retribution, you're going to need it to have a consistent means of regenerating your shield. So we start in Fire in the Skag Den, which is bonus incendiary damage whenever you deal splash damage. And that's kind of a vague term in this game, but what it means is, first off, it means any damage sourced from a grenade. Grenades inherently do splash damage as a rule. And that doesn't really matter what kind of grenade it is. And we rely on that, in fact, to leverage the uh, rest of the skills in this tree to our advantage. So this is a pretty decent damage increase. If you want to find out whether your weapon deals splash damage, typically you just want to find a wall or a floor and stand right up against it and shoot because splash damage will have friendly fire. and It will actually hit you if you're too close. Um, if it doesn't hit you, it typically only counts as area of effect. It won't be affected by splash damage a lot of the time. So after we max this out, we come down here to means of destruction, which is a, another really important ability. This, whenever you deal splash damage with this skill, you have a chance to return both a round to your magazine and a grenade to your grenade stock. And because grenades count as splash damage, when we use something like a hex or a quasar or a storm front, these kind of grenades generate tesla coils. So instead of dealing like a radius of splash damage, they shoot out a beam that connects to an enemy and deals damage per second rapidly. 
like a taser. Well, because it's still sourced from a grenade, it counts as splash damage, and every tick of that counts as a hit from the grenade. And so when we throw a bunch of hexes into the air, um, we basically get a lot of ammo regen and grenade regen from that. And we'll also get healing from that uh, vampire skill. But we need two more points to get down further in the tree, so I typically dump them in toward cross promotion. If I'm being honest, this skill actually isn't that great. In a lot of cases, this skill proves to be more harmful to you than it is your enemy. Especially if you're using a weapon like the Flacker, which already has a large splash damage radius. If you have Torg cross promotion and you fire your Flacker and you're moving forward at all, and this skill procs on the first detonation of a Flacker, it will often hit you. And a Flacker does extreme damage, even off one explosion, uh, just because player damage is scaled so much higher than like player health values, right? Enemies in this game have way more health and shields and stuff than you, so um, hitting yourself with that kind of splash damage is really painful. That said, there's nothing really good at Tier 2 that we can put our points into because everything else here benefits Iron Bear. And Iron Bear sucks on Mayhem 3, if I'm being honest. The only real benefits to Iron Bear right now in Mayhem 3 are the fact that when you activate it, you are invulnerable for a small period, and then when you're in it, the mech is taking damage instead of you. So you can use it as kind of a get-out-of-jail-free card for unavoidable damage or some kind of, you know, if you have a fire effect on you that you know would kill you before it expires or something, I'll hit it in that case. The other case is just using it for your anointments. Unfortunately, because Iron Bear's cooldown is very long, even if you jump in and immediately get out, and have the cooldown shortened by your remaining fuel. The cooldown is still pretty long, like a minute. And uh, most of her anointments, if we, you know, if you look around them, this type of anointment seems to be the only one that provides real value, in my opinion. Where it says after exiting Iron Bear, the next two magazines will get some type of elemental bonus, but it doesn't have a time duration, right? It's just like the next two magazines. And we can manipulate that to our advantage for sure by having basically guns that we never have to reload. So you could do this when you're mobbing at the start of a zone, um, get incendiary damage for two mags, and it just won't you know it won't expire. You'll have it for the whole zone. Unfortunately, most of our other ones are pretty bad. Like projectile speed is increased for a short time. It doesn't mean much. The only other one that has any practical value is. The one that says you have infinite ammo for five seconds after exiting Iron Bear. That can be abused with something like a purple Torg rocket launcher that does really high levels of bonus damage on cluster grenades or the cluster mode setting. And you can use that to just spam a crap load of clusters onto a target without having to reload it. Um, and then combine that with, uh, you know, bottomless mag talents. You'll get well over a dozen sets of cluster rockets on a target, which is enough usually to wipe out even a boss like uh, Gravemind. But it is unfortunately like a really high opportunity cost just to get in and get out of the mech immediately during a boss fight. It takes it takes more than like five seconds. And that's all time you could be spending shooting the boss. So it doesn't yeah, I don't know, in practical use it just doesn't feel very good and I don't even bother with my annoyments most of the time because of it. Uh, but once you have two points here you can come down to pull the holy pin and this is another really, really nice talent. This gives your grenades a chance to crit. Uh, and unlike gun damage, this is a chance regardless of where the grenade hits on the enemy. You know, you can hit them anywhere. It just has a percent chance to crit. And we make pretty good use of this even against bosses thanks to one of our class mods. Uh, so we definitely want to max this out. You'll need two more points to get down to Vampire from there. You can either put, like I do, I just put two more into cross promotion. I'm actually getting one from my class mod, so it's actually 4 out of 5 here. You can drop one of those points into auto bear if you want, if you don't mind using auto bear, like climbing in and getting out. Uh, and you can pair that with something like target softening, and what this will do is if you have, you know, vanquisher rockets on both arms, you can set this up, and auto bear will shoot these rockets at enemies, and they'll take 15% more damage after they get hit by that. So that's, you know, a decent little damage bump you can min-max, but I just don't find it worth the time to jump in the mech and climb out, frankly. Um, 
once you have two more points, jump down here into Vampire. This is probably Moses' single most important skill in all of her skill trees right now. All of her primary survivability is derived from this at the moment. This, even when you're running Shield of Retribution and you're running the class mod that converts healing into shields, um, this is your means of healing. You know, you, you don't really want to have to rely on something like a transfusion grenade or a moxie weapon to get health back. So, especially when we have access to this basically infinite grenade spam, when we use something like a hex or a storm front that generates so many grenades and every hit of that Tesla coil is going to attempt to give you back 20% of your missing health, which happens just constantly, right? So it's it's very hard. Between this and the health gate mechanic, it's very hard to get killed. It's very, very hard to go into fight for your life. It's not impossible, and it's not impossible even when you're running Shield of Retribution, but it's very rare. And even when it does happen, it's usually not a big deal. Uh, you'll note we don't really put any points into why can't I carry all these grenades. Uh, and that's really just an opportunity cost question, right? This is one skill point for one grenade capacity. Uh, the grenades that you get from grenade SDUs already puts you at a max capacity of 11 without this skill, which 11 tends to be more than enough for anything you need to do because of our grenade regeneration. And the fact that we don't really spam grenades on bosses, you know, especially now that the pipe bomb's been fixed. Grenades really are more just for tossing out to heal quickly during a boss fight. Especially because during boss, a lot, like every boss that I, th I think every boss in the game, for some reason, uh, Tesla coil grenades can't latch onto them. Even Katagawa Jr. I think doesn't get Tesla coiled, even though he's like a human-sized target. But anything larger, even non-boss enemies like a T-Rex in Eden Six, those things will not get Tesla coiled for some reason. Um, so having you know plus three grenades for three entire skill points doesn't really wind up making sense. You can also get plus grenades on your class mod all the way up to plus five grenades, which is like five skill points worth. So this just doesn't wind up making a lot of sense to me. Um, we do drop one extra point down here into the last, giving you the ability to throw grenades in fight for your life, which is nice because when you do get downed, one of the issues you will often have is You'll have some target like a you know anointed militant right in front of you that you won't be able to kill and fight for your life necessarily all the time. And then the other enemies like zealots will be behind a crate or around a corner and they won't want to come out. So having the ability to chuck your homing grenades in the air and have them you know go around corners and around crates and stuff to find those enemies can save you a bunch of times. So this is worth the point in my opinion. Uh, over here, what we're trying to do is essentially combine this tree with gear synergies to leverage the magazine size and ammo efficiency that this tree offers to create like a powerful engine of deploying damage. We're not going to get as much flat damage as we would out of something like this tree. Um, although really... Against bosses, you're only going to leverage desperate measures most of the time. But in mobbing, you would get stacks of you know these two. But um, realistically, mobbing is almost entirely handled by this investment in Demolition Woman anyway. So we're looking for something that offers a better opportunity cost to improve our boss killing. And traditionally, there's two ways in these kind of games to be good at boss killing. You need either very high sustained DPS or you need some access to extreme levels of burst damage, right? Uh, in my testing, Moe's doesn't really have any good access to truly extreme burst damage. Characters like Amara and Flak can do certain combinations of things to hit, you know, anywhere from like 1 to 5 million points of damage in a single hit. Moe's doesn't have access to something like that, at least as far as I can find. Um... So we go, especially with this tree, which is designed around going the other direction into very high sustained damage. And we're going to use that to combine with some gear synergies to create some very nice sustained DPS. And the first thing we'll invest into here is Cloud of Lead, which grants you a small incendiary damage bonus every four shots. And that four shot doesn't consume ammo. 
So outside of even the small incendiary damage bonus, this sort of acts as like a 25% multiply on your magazine size, right? Every four times you shoot, shoot around, you only spend three. Um, this can have a little bit more of a dramatic effect on something like a purple Torg rocket launcher, where, you know, if you only had a four mag size, you would technically get five shots out of it. And then combined with your ammo region and stuff, you can typically get somewhere around eight rounds uh, out of the cluster side of things, which is enough to do some pretty extreme damage before you get access to better gear and better gear synergies. Um, so it's a pretty nice talent. And we jump down here into Stoke the Embers just for some more incendiary damage for both you know you and the mech, as if the mech was going to do anything. Um, one point in redistribution, this is a pretty important skill for boss killing at least uh, where you regenerate 5% of your magazine per second for 3 seconds every time you score a crit now in combat this is just going to be up 100% of the time right? your grenades can crit so while you're mobbing your grenades are just constantly regenerating this and if you're not critting once every 3 seconds when you're fighting a boss like you're probably not killing that boss right? so this is just considered 5% ammo regen uh, you need to drop at least 1 in a match set to get further um, I invest a little bit more here as we get further down. Uh, you can drop that point into Daka Bear, I guess, if you want to have people jump on your mech in multiplayer or something. I don't really recommend putting it into Scrappy because, in my experience, um, you're not really doing a lot of weapon swapping as Moe's, especially with this kind of setup. You're focused almost exclusively on one or two weapons. So investing into like handling and weapon swap speed doesn't feel very good for this many skill points to me. Uh, we definitely want to jump into Scorching RPMs. Fire Rate is one of those functions that serves as a nice damage multiplier, so long as that Fire Rate doesn't also, by the exact same proportion, increase your time spent reloading. And so that's one of the things we're trying to fight against, right? We want to use our mag size and our ammo regen and our cloud of lead to make full use of this Fire Rate without eating a proportional increase in reload time. And we'll use gear synergies to help further that. But this also grants 20% critical hit damage. Uh, so it's kind of a no-brainer to me. Worth noting that critical hit damage does not apply to your grenades. The crit chance that you get from pull the holy pin over here in Demolition Woman uh, cannot be modified by critical hit damage any further. So this only applies to your gun damage. Uh, I don't usually put a point in Russian Offensive. The idea of sprinting and shooting at the same time sounds nice, but in practice it felt pretty useless to me, especially because it doesn't allow you to throw a grenade without stopping. This will knock you out of sprint whenever you throw a grenade, and we throw grenades constantly while we're mobbing, which is when we would want this. So this didn't feel very good to me. Feel free to grab it if you like it, though. Um, but I would probably pull that point out of match set if you had to. Uh, as we get down here, we definitely want to take the Iron Bank. Uh, in terms of boss killing, magazine size winds up being super relevant to uh, the kind of gear synergies we use for sustained DPS, so I really like this one. Uh, I don't take this floating point either. This increases the damage of Iron Bear if you use the same weapon on both arms. And 25% um, of bad is slightly less bad, so not worth the time. I typically drop all three points in a click click, which is a scaling gun damage bonus the lower your mag gets before it empties. Which, I kind of felt like this should have been designed the other way, right? That it should have started out at max and gotten lower as your mag got lower to further encourage you to take mag size and ammo regen bonuses. But I mean, it is how it is, right? So it's still going to be relevant to us. Um, it'd be relevant whether you're using a rocket launcher or whether you're going to be using a weapon like the Butcher like a, I'm going to show you how I have it set up. Um, because your mag size, your active mag will jump around a lot because of the way the Butcher works. And so I feel like this averages out to something like 20% gun damage for three points, which is still a really good investment. So I take all three points of this. Um, and then we drop one into Forge. You actually probably need to put like two more in the match set to get to Forge. This is where all your remaining points should go, in my opinion. Um, you could also take one more out of click click and actually finish off match set. Um, I feel it's just a little bit more efficient the way that it is right here. 
And then we do finish out with Forge, which is an, uh, another permanent 5% ammo regen. Um, so the idea here is basically fueling a weapon synergy, right? We're not going to use damage directly from skills outside of, you know, Stoke the Embers, uh, Scorching RPMs, and a little bit from Click Click. We're trying to use all of these ammo-related synergies, and we're going to use that to fuel some kind of weapon synergy. And what we're going to do with that, at least in what I found to be the most effective, like in sort of consistent way, is the Butcher. Uh, this is a Hyperion shotgun. It only shoots three pellets per shot, but it comes with a really high weapon damage multiplier. All these bonuses, by the way, other than like the critical hit damage and stuff, are in the card, right? So it's already factored into the damage you see. But uh, it does have a critical hit bonus. The main perk of this shotgun is that, if we can pull out the right gun here, it fires extremely fast for a shotgun. This is a full auto shotgun that unloads really quickly. And you can see how long we can sustain that, even without triggering our ammo region on crit. And there's a little bit of RNG to this because the special perk of the Butcher, the red text perk, is that it has something like a 50% chance. I don't remember the exact percentage when I tested this. It was somewhere, it was somewhere in that vicinity, like 30 to 50, to refund another bullet when you fire. And so you'll see the ammo kind of jump around, and that's because it's basically the Butcher streaking on proccing versus it not. Uh, and once we are actually hitting a target and getting that other 5% damage bonus, we can actually extend this for a long time. Sometimes uh, we'll, we'll kill a Grave Ward farm without ever stopping at all. And so this is already a pretty high level of sustained DPS. Because the, the gun is already pretty high sustained damage. It has a crit hit damage bonus. But it's not really enough, right? It's not enough of a multiplying force for us. I will say a incendiary one is probably optimal here. Um, any kind of element. I don't know if this can spawn any other elements. I know that it can spawn non-element. Um, but we do want to prefer incendiary if we can get it. Um, and we'll explain why here. These other weapons don't matter for boss killing. We're not going to be using them. We're using them, we're equipping them just for the match set bonus, basically. I want Hyperion weapons and shield and stuff. I guess for boss killing we would also want to equip like a Hyperion grenade. The more mag size we can get, the longer we can go without butcher proccing, basically. And it gives us like a wider range of time to have it proc. The other element of this, though, and an important one, is this Minesweeper class mod. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this class mod, but in my, pra in, you know, my testing, this thing has proven to be a really nice sustained DPS boost. Um, it outperforms the, uh, what do you call it, the Blastmaster mod by a pretty significant margin in my experience, even when you have a really well-rolled one for Pull the Holy Pin. What it does is every time you land a crit, that crit has a 25% chance to drop a micro grenade that explodes after a short time. It's not a very uh, clear description, I guess. Uh, and in testing, what I found was two things. One, the micro grenade's damage is based on the damage of the hit that spawned it. And I think they did that to try and normalize the damage between something like a shred of fire that was shooting low base damage but an extremely high amount of bullets per second versus, you know, something like a revolver where it was shooting a lower amount of bullets per second at a higher base damage. Um, but what I also found was that the micro grenade inherits the damage type of the weapon that spawned it too. So, when we have an incendiary weapon like this, uh, when this crits, if it procs Minesweeper, it looks at the base damage of the crit, and that determines the damage of the micro grenade. I don't think it's a one-to-one -one ratio. I just, in testing, it was clear to me that having a higher base damage resulted in a, a higher damage micro grenade. Um, what it also means is that we get to double dip on, on modifiers that improve elemental damage because the elemental damage will improve the base damage of the gun that spawned it, and then the grenade spawns as incendiary, getting buffed again by the incendiary damage. That's how it appears to work. 
because the elemental damage modifier from Mayhem, for example, is a humongous boost to our sustained DPS. So this thing winds up being, as far as I can tell, our best single target DPS class mod. I think ideally you'd want it to roll something like this where it has the minimum amount of Torg cross promotion and then the maximum amount of fire in the skag den. Because Torg cross promotion is not really going to do anything for us when it comes to boss killing. But fire in the skag den will give us bonus damage on the grenade because that is splash damage. Obviously, for your like secondary mods, anything that increases incendiary is good shotgun damage because we're using a shotgun. Hyperion fire rate and fire and uh, weapon damage is also good. Um, you could even get weapon reload or Hyperion reload to minimize the impact when you do have to reload sometimes, which will happen with this weapon. Uh, your shield, I think, isn't really that important for boss killing. Um, at least not in, in the kind of fights we farm. I can't think of any fights other than Kilovolt. Um where you would definitely want a Transformer, just because it would make you immune to all of his damage, pretty much. I just really like this shield in general. Um, it doesn't just make you immune to shock damage, but it converts shock damage back into shields for you. But it also grants a 40% chance to absorb bullets, which don't deal damage when they get absorbed. You know, you don't even really need the ammo count from that. It's just like a 40% chance to ignore bullets, which is amazing. But uh, there's also a couple cases like um, the Malawan Heavy Shock Troopers, I think, are one of the more deadly enemies in this game. If you don't have a Transformer, at least, the uh, one of their attacks is some kind of deal where they drop a set of pylons on the ground and they'll generate testicle coils between them. And something seems really buggy about it. And it will hit you in bizarre locations. Like You can be on a completely different floor from the enemy like in the Malawan Circle of Slaughter, and they'll still tick on you sometimes. I'm not sure what causes it, but it makes them extremely dangerous. Never mind the fact that they're dealing shock, which is, you know, the most dangerous shield element in the first place. So this just makes it nice. You, if you see a Malawan Shock Trooper, now it's just like a buddy. You want him to hit you with shock. Uh, your grenade, again, I think for boss killing, it doesn't matter too much. You want something with longbow, ideally, in the case that you need to heal, or homing. Um, homing's not really ideal if you're going to farm a boss like Katagawa Jr. Um, I don't know why you'd farm that annoying boss in the first place. But um, he jumps around a lot, and so homing can kind of get stuck chasing him. Uh, whereas Longbow just sort of teleports to a location. If you don't have a hex, right, for mobbing and stuff, I do really like Stormfront. We'll get to that, I guess, in the mobbing section. Let's stick to the boss stuff for now. Um, and in the boss context, it doesn't really matter too much. We don't have any grenades. I think its piss might actually be one of the better ones because you could throw it and get another 20% increased damage for 6 seconds. And you can throw a grenade while you're firing instead of alternating. So it could just be a, a damage increase. I pretty much just stick to the Stormfront, not just because it's Longbow, but because it's Hyperion. So it's actually giving me one more round in my mag right now from match set. Uh, and for the relic, I typically farm a boss like Grave Horde with loaded dice for the luck bonus. Um, you can kind of use whatever you want here. I will say that if you roll the Mayhem modifier where it says enemies can reflect, have like a 30% chance to reflect bullets, one thing that's really useful and one of the reasons why it's nice to have an elemental weapon is you can use this elemental projector version of your artifact and what that'll do uh, you have a pretty decent chance of setting yourself on fire but well, the butcher's pretty low I guess but um, there's still a chance you'll set yourself on fire uh, this isn't a particularly dangerous amount of fire damage even for the player but this is an enormous damage increase 183 percent elemental damage is nuts um, so on the Reflect bosses, I like to swap into this. This one happened roll magazine size, which is also nice. But otherwise, I run this this version of Loaded Dice. The, the prefix doesn't matter to much to me outside of the Reflect consideration. You really want something that has good uh, sub bonuses, right? This one rolled Incendiary and Area of Effect. So we're double dipping on Incendiary, like I mentioned, in the gun, and then the grenade spawned from the gun crit. 
and then area of effect, which I think should still further impact uh, grenade damage. So yeah, basically our goal is to use this shotgun with nice base damage, multiple pellets, and a high fire rate. It's not just do high sustain DPS, but spawn as many of these minesweeper grenades as we can and have them deal further buff damage. What we'll do, I think we'll run run multiple attempts here at Grave Ward. Because I do, this is a nice one because this is neutral, right? All this is enemy stuff. Um, so this will be a, a sort of neutral run that will show our base sort of standard boss kill time against this boss. Um, but I do want to show you multiple runs just so you can get an idea of like, you know, what it looks like when it's not good. You know, one of the things I see some people do is post Grave Ward kills with like the sickest modifiers ever. And it's like, yeah, but what happens when the boss has crappy modifiers? And you can see on our normal, you know, neutral double DPS, he's going to die before he gets to do much of anything. The, the grenades really do provide a, a very large amount of DPS when it comes to sustained damage. I'll take a look at the loot here. This is an Iron Bear class mod, so by default it's kind of poop. Uh, well, let's do a few runs. Let's see if we can find a bad one. You know, maybe not one that's totally miserable, but something that's not good. Because I usually don't reset for mods unless it's like the Nightmare Fuel run. This one is plus grenade, minus incendiary, minus normal. This second affix, by the way, I'm pretty sure this is bugged because it's like plus normal bullet damage but minus elemental resist. And I'm actually pretty sure it does what it says it does. It makes them weaker to elements. I don't think they meant for that. I think they meant plus elemental resist, but uh, that's not what they did. And in practice is what it feels like too. So the incendiary is hurting us pretty bad here, but the grenades will offset some of that. You can see we almost have to reload, but we kind of extend it for a while because the butcher will go on some nice proc streaks. But this is usually what happens on a less than ideal run, right, with mayhem modifiers. You wind up having to kill him here in this eye phase. And, hey, don't do that, jerk. But, uh... Yeah, that's sort of an example of a pretty below average run because he's getting the minus incendiary, which is affecting, ultimately it's affecting our base grenade damage from Minesweeper, right? Stop gap, blah blah blah, anointed, kill the wisp, no thanks. We'll run a couple more, I kind of want to, I like to give people an idea of the actual effectiveness of these kind of builds. We'll see if we can find like a nasty one and then like a really nice one. This is only minus incendiary. It's going to be like the same as what we just did. Thankfully, it doesn't take long to save and reload in this game. So this one's pretty bad, actually. Well, I guess it's almost... Now, this is almost the same as what we just did. We'll try one more time. Hopefully the game behaves. This one is... We'll just run it, right? This looks like something that... It's minus damage and minus shotgun damage, which starts us at 0.25. We do get an elemental damage bonus. So we'll see, right? We have two penalties and one nice bonus. Yeah, the end effect's actually pretty bad because the two multipliers are multiplying together. But our grenades are kind of saving us, I think. Oof. Whoa. Yeah, grenades. Definitely incendiary. <laughs> Those grenades. But yeah, as you can see, like, even on pretty bad modifiers, he's not... He's not too big of a deal. I really don't typically restart these boss fights uh, for any Mayhem modifiers. 
load in one more and see if we get something really nasty. This is plus grenade, minus incendiary. We'll kill him, but I don't think it's going to be much different than the last runs. I would say that in my... I did some extensive testing on this boss. And I found that like the worst kills, like when you had like a really bad run, the worst modifiers, it takes about 60 seconds. Which is a long time. This one's actually not great. Maybe we've had a bad RNG spell on grenades, so I don't know. But we have had pretty good RNG on the magazine. But yeah, this boss is trivial. I was kind of hoping to get like a... Uh, one that's just pure buff so you can see uh, how absurd it can get but even on the neutral one I think we killed him in like seven seconds or something so let's go ahead and jump over to the mobbing side of things where I think you do have to make some changes to be more efficient because the class mod we're using for single target DPS certainly is not the most efficient in my experience for mobbing right and I like the anvil because from, compared to most of the zones, this seems like one of the highest concentration of badasses and anointed enemies. So let's take a look at our mods here. We got plus grenades and plus... Oh boy. <laughs> uh, maybe we should reload this. I guess I could show you what it looks like with those kind of mods, but those are pretty absurd for my benefit. Uh, the laser exploder is one of my mainstays when I'm mobbing, especially in a radiated version. Radiation damage is something I think people underrate quite a bit, particularly on Moe's. Um, the radiation explosion is affected by Torg cross-promotion, and whenever an enemy is caught in the explosion of radiation, they're guaranteed to take the status effect. So you can chain this radiation effect pretty well for mopping up most enemies, um, and anybody that's irradiated is dealing damage to everything around it before it explodes anyway. It doesn't deal... It does a little bit more health damage than normal, but um, it doesn't have any like great bonus versus armor or anything. And usually I back that up with a flacker. In this case, we have elemental damage, so we'll put a burning flacker on. Uh, and then the rest of these slots, I just usually fill with Torg weapons for the uh, match set bonus. I leave my transformer on when I'm mobbing. You can also run a Rough Rider. I was going to test this later, and I found, uh, or earlier. And I did, and I found that the Rough Rider counts as full at all times, even though it has a capacity of zero. I don't know if it was like that in Borderlands 2, but uh, a Sprint Rough Rider would never do anything because it's always considered full. Uh, but a regular Rough Rider, especially if you can find one that comes with some kind of resistance on it, is also a very good shield. I just prefer the, the Transformer for the immunity to shock. And it also really helps before you can find something like a recurring hex. This is the premier, like this is the item you're hoping for. When you're playing a build like this, the recurring hex is like the creme de la creme of grenades. And the reason for that is recurring as a prefix is the combination of hex, or sorry, of divider and merv. It's, um, you'll throw two grenades when you first throw them. And then when those detonate, they spawn into three more. So you get six grenades per button press. Which, when you combine that with Means of Destruction of Vampire, winds up being really absurd. Uh, and you would prefer Shock on these Tesla elements, or these Tesla grenades. Because uh, Cryo would be nice if the anointed enemies weren't immune to Cryo. They're one of the more dangerous en enemy types in the game, and having them be completely immune kind of screws you over. right? You need to be hitting with grenades uh, to be triggering things like Vampire in your survivability. So, you know, if you're down to just an anointed militant, you can't heal anymore. You know, you're screwed. So, shock, I think, is the best. It strips the shields, which are pretty much always the first layer of defense, allowing you to get right to the armor and uh, ensuring they never regen. Um, if you can't find a hex yet, I'm pretty sure a hex is just a world drop, unfortunately. There's no, I don't think there's any good way to target farm a hex that I know of. 
So while you're looking for that, farming Grave Ward or just mob farming or something, keep an eye out for things like a Quasar, preferably like a homing sticky or something. Um, a cloning one is also good. A Stormfront in Longbow is also quite good. If you're going to run a Stormfront, though, I would highly recommend that you pair it with a Transformer because a Stormfront really does go everywhere, right? Like, these things get chucked in all kinds of directions, and you sometimes lose track of where all of them are, and they'll hit you. And even though the Transformer blocked the, the shock damage from the explosion, uh, fire in the skag then is going to ensure that I deal bonus incendiary damage, which has a chance to light me on fire. And that will not be prevented, including, you know, the damage of the burn. So if you don't have a transformer and that happens to you, the, sh the grenade is going to blow your shield right off, and then the fire damage is going to kill you. You're going to have to go into Iron Bear to survive, which is obnoxious. So try to pair that with a transformer to, you know, not go insane. Uh, and then the last thing, you want to switch your class mod out for one of these Blast Masters. This is the one I'm currently favoring, um... I typically don't find that more points in Vampire are necessary. Uh, just the base 5 and then plus 1 is more than enough to keep us alive through pretty much anything. Um, I do like having a point in redistribution and then the rest and pull the holy pin for a 60% grenade crit chance. Um, you could do something like a 2-2-1 two, two, split though. In your secondary mods, you know, just go with things like weapon damage, um, splash damage, Weapon reload is particularly not relevant while you're mobbing, so that's something I would try to to not get. Um, or certainly don't favor it while you're in your mobbing loadout. Grenade capacity is fine. I don't feel that restricted when I just have 11 grenades, but uh, mine's currently giving me plus 5. And then some Torg projectile speed, which doesn't seem to do anything for a flacker, but it does seem to help the missiles that spawn from the laser exploder. And since we got pretty much insane... Oh, I forgot to switch my artifact, too. We don't want to load a dice for... I like this auto-idle for mobbing. This suffix gives you 18% of your max health after killing an enemy. So this is a nice way to also feed your health sustain alongside Vampyr. Um, the Atom Bomb prefix, because like I mentioned about radiation damage, I really like this because it significantly increases the damage of just not just the aura, but the radius and the damage of the explosion. Catching more enemies, making them take more damage. Um, it can really clean up whenever you have enemies in a tight area. You know, Eden 6 has got a lot of those little dinosaurs and stuff and jabbers in tight areas. And radiation will just fuck them up. Uh, I'm tempted to restart this anvil just because um, the modifiers were so beneficial to me. I'm pretty sure this stuff is just going to get destroyed. I can't even see him. There's a badass zealot. Badass zealot. This is gonna get melted. But really, mobbing is mostly about relying on your grenades. You know, a hex is particularly ideal. And if you watch my ammo, you know, I can literally just spray this into the air. I practically am right now. But. You, you just can't run out of ammo when you're using a weapon like this. One other weapon that I really like to use while I'm mobbing though is a flacker. Uh, oh man, with these mods this is going to be disgusting. Where is he? No. You. I wonder if we can just one-shot this guy. Yeah, we can. He's the um, a burning flacker is capable of some pretty absurd single target DPS. Hey, what do we get? Hey, I'm busy. Blood, okay. Yeah, I mean, if it doesn't say badass, you can pretty much just throw grenades at it and it'll melt. With the modifiers we have, just the grenades are going to melt even badasses that don't have, like, three defensive layers. barely get up here before they're getting melted.
I think what we'll do is go a little bit farther up here and find, um, yeah. I think we're kicking those. Oh, what was that evil eye dog? As you can see, the health gate mechanic kind of saves you against those kind of gigantic hits that they expect you to do something about before you get hit. We're taking a rocket in the face. Here's an anointed militant. I will tell you, you gotta be careful with these guys when you're using something like a flacker. You see how the explosion is coming back to me? Whenever an anointed militant has his shield up, he technically reflects projectiles back to you. And while it seems like this gun doesn't fire a projectile, it does. It just fires sort of a slow moving projectile that doesn't detonate for about a second. And so if he has his shield facing you, it will bounce off of him and then turn around and it will shoot the explosion pattern back in your direction. Needless to say, this will fuck you up. So when you're fighting a militant, I tend to recommend like shooting to the left or to the right of him so that the explosions hit him, but you don't actually get the main projectile knocked back at you, even though you can't see it. And this is kind of why I felt like the Shield of Retribution's defensive side really wasn't worth pursuing. In particular, the oh, this might kill me. Yeah. He was pretty close. Yeah, he just gets messed up. I feel like I feel like we should restart this mode and try to find something that's not so not so obscenely in our benefit for mayhem. Because while it is still easy, regardless of the modifiers, I think that was a little bit absurd. So yeah, here we basically hit nothing, right? Minus normal bullets, which we're not using, and they get plus 50% health, or 45. We can pretty much run directly at this rocket launcher guy. Oh, we're flying. Yeah, that looks more normal against somebody who has a stack of armor. But as you can see, the normal enemies still just get totally chewed up by these x grenades. They're really just never part of your concern for the most part. And we can just kind of run in here, you know what I mean? Like, I can't even really tell what's going on, I just see that there's a lot. I do have to watch that militant. And I'll see. I notice that the every once in a while the health regen just stops, and I think it's because I overload on grenades or something. I haven't quite nailed down what causes that, but for some reason it just kind of like... Stop working. It's militants, if you try to aim to their side, sometimes you can get them. But once they lower their shield like that and they throw it, you really do. Oh, that's gonna hurt. But yeah, you do want to try and burst them down when you have the opportunity. And try not to leave an anointed militant as the last enemy alive because they do stay immune when they do their sort of fire attack where they constantly spawn fire pools underneath you and uh, you're not going to be able to heal from your grenades when they're doing that because they're immune. Let's go bust all these assholes. I suppose I never talked about guardian ranks, but the truth of the matter is, I kind of just went down all three of the trees evenly. Uh, we'll take some accuracy. I will say that the hunter tree, in particular, is not overly effective for this build. Um, Treasure hunter might be good for mob farming, but these bonuses up here, 
like action skill cooldown rate, who gives a fuck. Uh, regenerate a grenade every 10 kills, which is meaningless for the most part. And then ammo pickups could not be more meaningless for this build. So if you really wanted to min-max to that degree, I'd probably focus on Enforcer and Guardian Trees first before you invest. But you do, you know, Treasure Hunter is at the bottom of that tree, so if you want it, you don't have much choice. I really do find the Flacker an effective mobbing tool, though, just because most of the time you're looking to clean up um, badass enemies. And there's kind of a sweet spot to this weapon where it's right about in this range. He's a little bit too close. Right about there. Where you want him to be getting hit by, like, the second explosion in the pattern. Love me up here. here and there for some reason. I have no idea why. But yeah, if you if you see this sort of pattern, right? You want them to be like right on the other side of that first explosion. That'll give them a chance to get hit by the secondary projectiles that go off to the left, to the right, especially when Tor cross promotions uh, procs on those. You want them to get hit by like four, five, six explosions from the flacker. There is kind of a dead zone too to this weapon, right? This whole area in there where nothing happens between the gun and the initial explosion. So you kind of want to be mindful of enemies that just charge at you. Because you may need to switch to something or like knife them in the face just to get them to stop moving for a second. Like this guy. We can't really hit him at this range. Right about here is fine. And sometimes for some, you know, the flacker is just kind of inconsistent in that way. It always has been, even in other games. But, um... Overall, it just still has such a high single target potential that I, I do like mobbing with it most of the time. The laser splitter is, like I said, a pretty good weapon in general. It's not, um... Amazing in the burst damage sense, like burning down these badass aggro tanks isn't amazing. But as you can see, all those guys exploded. And uh, when you have more enemies, obviously it's more effective. They're all sort of hitting each other with radiation aura. And then they'll all hit each other with their death explosions too. But it's also fun just like one shot a guy. Seems like a pretty good spot for a, like a laser splitter, right? Irradiate a bunch of enemies. Well, they're all kind of spreading apart now. I think one other thing radiation does that they don't mention is that it slows their attack rate. But even though we got a bunch of guys spawning from all different directions, we kind of just tank it all. There's an anointed militant. These guys would just be obnoxious forever, you know what I mean? I don't think there's any build that, like, isn't annoyed by these assholes. He dropped his shield, so you really want to... Oh, did he put it back up? I think maybe I just walked into my flacker shot. Usually not a big deal, even if you're going to fight for your life for a second. But I mean, through the whole area, tanking that pretty much in the face, I think we went down like once? Something like that? You know, whatever could have been provided by Shield Retribution is really just not worth losing the other bonuses that we'd be giving up. And it's especially not worth giving up the class mod. That uh, is really contributing a lot of damage here. Oftentimes, my farming runs will alternate between this and uh, and Grave Ward. Those two seem to be like really consistent, easy farms for this build. Although, really, nothing proves to be a trouble. 
Um, it was pretty easy to solo like the circle of slaughters and the uh, proving grounds in particular. I thought those were strangely easy. Actually, it seems like the enemies that spawn in them are almost um, easier than the kind of enemies that spawn here in the anvil for some reason. But I don't know. Maybe I just didn't pay attention to the mods. Money, money. Definitely need more money. Anyway, this video is getting pretty long here, so uh, we'll probably wrap it up with that. I don't think I can think of anything else to talk about here. Uh, if you do have any other questions about the build, or MOS in general, I guess, you can drop them in the comments. This is probably the part of the video where I should tell you to, you know, press all the YouTube buttons. I guess. Uh, or you can stop by my Twitch. I'll leave that in the description. I do stream a lot. Uh... I've been streaming a lot of Borderlands 3 recently, especially. Um, and I may bounce back to Path of Exile every once in a while, but for now, especially as long as they, you know, keep the content rolling out for this game at a reasonable pace, you'll probably catch me playing uh, a lot more Borderlands 3. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.